Today I've got a topic that, well, frankly, some of you might find upsetting. Some of you may find it offensive. Some of you, some of you will find it fitting. And I can't help how you take it. And it's something that I know a lot of people struggle with. We're just going to get right to it. <laughs> I'm, I love being outside to be able to do these Facebook Lives and to be able to walk around and kind of look at my yard and everything as I do this. I just love this. Absolutely love this. I'm going to swing around here. You can see my chicken coop here. And there's my chicken. You want to say hi, girls? Oh, where are you at? Oh, there's one there. You see her? Oh, there's another one there. <laughs> Anyways, the topic I want to talk about today and that I feel kind of really strong because I've it's happened more than once and it's interesting how you as, as I'm pondering life and things and wondering what to talk about what to say what to do things like that I notice several things start happening immediately that kind of gel together and that thing that I'm going to talk about today is enabling we have wonderful, fantastic, amazing children. We have phenomenal talents and skills that they have. We have the, the children this day and age are just spectacular in what they can do. But one of the common problems I'm seeing in our therapy practice and also with those who I've been working with is enabling we enable them to stay kind of stuck we enable them to stay as a kind of a um, lack of a better term sorry this is i this is how it was described to me is a menace to society a menace to society is somebody who does not contribute who does not uh, provide value or worth to where they're, they're at, their situation, that they do not provide help and encouragement, they do not, they, they don't give back. Uh, that, that's what I'm going to say. But it's not just that. We also enable poor eating habits. We enable poor behaviors. We enable poor, uh, just poor lifestyle. And this is why, I know this is going to be sensitive for some of you, but it, it's something that I keep seeing repeated over and over again. And then parents say, well, how can I help my kid? Or how can I help so-and-so? How can I? And they just start asking all these same questions. And so when the same question is repeated multiple times, you know it's something to discuss. And... How, I want to talk about how we can get out of that. We are in a instantaneous society. We live in an instantaneous society. You can go almost to any kind of a restaurant and you can get a, a steak instantaneous. You could get a salad instantaneous. You can get, you know, something that would normally take 20, 30, 40 minutes to cook pretty instantaneous. And our children have grown up in that. They've grown up to where they say, I want something, and boom, they get it. They say, you know, they go to a store. Now, let's just put it this way. If you were to go to, let's see, let's say Arby's. I like Arby's. Arby's is, is delicious. And let's say you go to Arby's, and you went to a drive-thru, and they said, okay, that'll be about 45 minutes. What would you do? Would you sit there and wait 45 minutes? Most likely, most of you would say, okay, then I'm out of here. I'm gone. I'm not going to stay here for 45 minutes. Well, that's an example of the society that our children are growing up in. And so it becomes very incumbent upon us to teach our children that that is not really how everything works even though that's what they think we have instant gratification by playing video games 
children who play video games, they get that instant dopamine rush. They get all those instant, instant chemical rushes that happen because of the, the way um, the video games affect your brain. And so with that instantaneous pleasure, they're getting used to that. They're getting used to growing up with that. They're getting used to thinking that that's how everything is. And they're not finding jobs. They're not getting out and helping society. They're not volunteering. They're not, they're not doing a lot of things. And that's where it's our responsibility. That's our responsibility. Kick them off of those video games. Yeah, it's going to be kind of a painful learning experience. And it'll even be kind of painful for you because of the attitude that you have to deal with and things like that. But we've got to get them off those video games. We've got to get them out in nature. We've got to get them out walking. We've got to get them out there exploring. We've got to get them out there working. We've got to get them out there doing something besides sitting at home and relying on a government relying on anybody that if, especially if they're old enough if they're old enough i mean obviously if you have a young child uh, okay you've you've got the responsibility to take care of that child but if you've got a you know 15, 14 i would say 12 on up they got to start helping out really start helping out and my children they start helping out at age three they start you know doing things that they can do around the house to show that that's part of the responsibility of being a family it's part of the responsibility to take care of our own and our contributing and so at age three years old my children and and this is just me I'm not bragging or anything like this I'm just telling you that I practice what I preach I practice what I'm talking about is they got out and they would pull weeds <laughs> well there are some negative consequences that come with that if you don't teach them right properly for instance <laughs> my son <coughs> and this is what's interesting is when they're so young they love to work they love learning new things they love getting out there they love just being with you and my son was so excited that I was out working with him and I was teaching just about weeding. And as we're going through and we're weeding, I had to, I went in to get a drink of water or something like that. And all of a sudden, my son comes running in. He's like, Daddy, Daddy, I weeded a garden. And instantly I went, Oh no, what did you just weed? Thinking, okay, I've been showing him what he was been pulling. He'll know exactly what to pull. So I go out there, and what did he pull? The whole row of cucumbers. <laughs> I was like, oh, I, after getting rid of that frustration, I sat down with him and said, oh, thank you so much for helping, but next time, can Daddy show you the plants to pull first? Because these are ones that we were going to eat. And then he, he was... I sorry daddy I was like oh it's okay I'm so glad you helped me but it starts at a young age and it doesn't matter what age they are at they can still do it it doesn't mean if you haven't been teaching your children since a child that they can't start helping out around the house is it going to be a little harder Yes, because you're going to have to break old patterns and negative behaviors that they've developed. And, but it is possible. And one of the things I want to challenge you to do is go to a restaurant with them and tell them we're not going to order anything. We're just going to sit here and smell this wonderful food. You can get a drink of water if you want, just order a glass of water, but no food, absolutely no food. Allow them to just sit and smell and then help them to talk about it and then go through a process with them. You know, what did you think about that? Because they've gotten so used to everything happening now that we've enabled them that if it's not instantaneous, it's not worth doing. 
we've enabled them that if it's not uh, going to arrive or achieve or get within a relatively short time, then it's not worth doing. So st- you do this exercise too. It is hard. It is challenging because you have that same attitude on some of the things. Now, if you go to a sit-down restaurant, you don't expect to get food instantaneous. But if you were to to be told it's going to be probably a two hours while we cook your food, you probably would leave. Because that's not what... I mean, you should be able to have food within 30, 40 minutes from a, a restaurant. But go and try this yourself. It's a challenging experience. Just sit there, watch everybody, and notice what's happening in your body. Notice the thoughts and the feelings that are coming up. Notice how frustrating you you might be getting. And as you do this, sit and take this opportunity to, to share with your children, to talk with them, to let them know that Everything in life is not instantaneous. Everything in life is is not just instant gratification. And then we've got to start making them do things. They can't sit around the house and expect to contribute to society. They can't sit around the house and expect, and for us to expect that they're going to be able to help out that is incumbent upon us we have to step up as parents and stop enabling and this also goes for parents uh, excuse me older children who are taking care of parents or a spouse who is taking care of one is we got to stop enabling negative behaviors that they may have for an example may be let's just say well let's just say exercise and our spouse is struggling with health and or our our parents are struggling with health or something and they come visit or or they come to live with you so that you can help take care of them well you you got to enable you got to enable positive and good behaviors not negative behaviors we got to enable behaviors like okay you need to get up and go you know, walk, walk down to the store with me or things like that so that we can start changing the past patterns that got them to where they're at. I really feel like it's important that we love everybody around us and stop enabling them. Stop thinking that we're doing them a favor by allowing them to sit on their behind all day long and play video games and to constantly think of, oh, I have this dream, I'm going to be a video gamer. Oh, well, okay, if that, if that is their dream, we still have to do things in moderation. I mean, I, I, I can't do these videos all day long every day. I would never be able to provide for my family. I can't do things that I want to do on a regular basis, even if it does contribute back to society, if I can't take care of my own. And if I don't follow the the same things that I'm talking about here, is enabling good, positive behaviors and stop the enabling of negative thoughts, patterns, and beliefs that have been going on. I'm kind of rambling a little bit, but it's just a hot button that I've I've seen over and over and over again with several different people that I've been working with and then talking with different people. This is a challenge in our society, so I hope this helps you. If you got upset, that's okay. Let me know. I can't I can't change how you take this. But it comes with love. It comes with a great passion for wanting to have a better country, a better society, and better children. It comes with great intention to help our world be the best world we possibly can have. You're amazing. Believe it. Have a fantastic day. 